Rajiv was, I called him and I said, are you in town on the 9th? And his uh, thing is, I think 90% sh- I'm in town. So I said, Rajiv, I'm launching an album and I'd like you to be the guest of honor. And truly, it took him no more than two seconds to say, Viji, I would love to do that. And thank you so much, Rajiv. I know what a busy man you are and how many projects you're involved in. And, and I really, really appreciate that. And the reason I wanted Rajiv to be the guest of honor today is one, because of his association with my family. Two, because of his, obviously when he spoke, you you knew his musical involvement and understanding of not just Carnatic music, but music from around the world. And three, his ability to convey a message. I mean, we've, all, we've seen it in all of his movies about how brilliantly he conveys messages. And you, as we saw today, he's just a wonderful speaker. Thank you so much, Rajiv, again. I really appreciate you taking the time to be here. Now, to talk a little bit about this journey, uh, Malabar to Morocco, this has, this, this journey really has three parts to it. The first part being my 24-year-old son and his friends who would always come home, listen to me practice and say, oh auntie, what you, it's so nice. And when I say practice, when I'm practicing traditional classical Carnatic music at home. So I would tell these children, you know, why don't you come to a kacheri? Oh no, auntie, I can't do that. It's not for me, it's not my scene. And then I realized it's music, Carnatic music is entrenched in every South Indian. We hear it from the minute we are born. We may not have, some of us may not have learnt it formally. Some of us may have learnt it, but we all grow up with it all around us, starting with our mother singing a lullaby to us or hearing the Vishnu Sahasranamam in our, in our homes every morning. It's just such an integral part of an Indian's life. Classical music, I don't want to get too specific and say just Carnatic music, both Hindustani and Carnatic music. It's such an integral part of our lives that people don't realize what happens is these children have never gone to concerts. They just assume because their uncles, aunts, their grandparents and their parents go to these concerts, it's not a cool place for them to hang out. It's not a cool place for them to be seen in. But you play good music to them in any format. It doesn't matter whether it's traditional classical or whether it's film music, which has a strong base of classical in it. They all start tapping their toes. So I said, the only way to do get them excited is to present something to them in a different package. I can't go learn something new for them now, because that's not what I was trained to do. But I said, I can certainly learn to package it differently. And which is what Malabar to Morocco, that was the basis for this whole album. To reach out to that 20-something generation, to tell them Carnatic music is cool, Carnatic music is okay, it can be fun, and you guys can listen to it. I hope they find it fun now. And the second reason for doing this is my own travels all over the world, performing. I've always walked into these various countries, walked along the markets and the roads and listened to their traditional music and I've always been inspired by it and I would come back and try these sounds on the violin and say, you know, there must be a way to put all of this together because music is music and it sounds so nice. So that was the second part of it. 
And the third reason was, you know, my friends and my husband pushing me into saying, to, into, and telling me, you can do something different. You need to do something different. And it was their support and belief that I could do something different that sort of came about this album. And there are some very dear friends of mine who were instrumental in taking me to meet my first composer, Gopi Sundar, and my other composer, Shalin Sharma, who was on stage with me. Shalin and I, again, have been friends for over 25 years. We've always talked about doing something together, but until Malabar to Morocco, nothing ever really happened. So Malabar to Morocco was a journey for Shalin and I as well. I got a chance to assist uh, on my first job and uh, it was for director Hari Haran and he was doing a documentary on Proficity and Krishna. And the first time I went in as an assistant, um, I, I was doing everything like, you're like the fifth assistant, so you got to do everything like serving tea, putting the clap, writing, every, I mean, so are you on direction department, are you on camera, you're on every department. So you're the runner on the unit. I was delighted and suddenly in that shoot there was this big camera which we were trying out for something called the steady cam and it wasn't working and the gentleman who had come with the camera wasn't uh, you know, well so um, for the first time in my life I put this camera on my chest and the monitor wasn't working and I was shooting blind and the first person I shot in my life with my thing was Vizhiti and Krishnan. And that day, Vijay was playing the violin with her. So it's like life has come a full circle. And now I'm seeing Vijay's documentary. But fortunately, Vijay's documentary is in focus and it looks great. And whoever has shot it has done a fantastic job. <laughs> like the one which we shot where the camera wasn't, you know, there was no monitor working and we were like shooting blind hoping that something will happen. So 25 years down the line, uh, filmmaking has improved. I think aesthetics of uh, the way the image is created is also improved. But Carnatic music, what, where is it, is the question. So if you were to do conventional Carnatic music, you get a chance to play during those 14, 15 days during December and the rest of the time you have to go and hope for Cleveland, Aradhana and some temple festival here. So music has to change and evolve and I think uh, it's a great thing that music is evolving and changing because it's wrong on our part to ever imagine that music as in Carnatic music was like this always. This music that we now know as Carnatic music is probably can be traced to the, the Tanjavur court, which is just around 250, 200 years old. And Tanjavur was a great cosmopolitan center where they had great influences. This very instrument that you are playing, the violin, is not an Indian instrument. They used to call it Fidil Krishna here, Fidil, you know. So it's obvious that it's influence came through either the French troops or through some travelers. So music and musical influences came in literally across the seas. I mean, she calls it Malabar to Morocco. I love the alliteration of Ma Ma. But <laughs> more than the alliteration is her origins. And I always enjoy speaking Malayalam to Professor Krishnan and Viji too speaks it fluently. So. Where, why did these Westerners come? They came for the spices or through the spice route. And the moment she said Morocco, I, was, I remembered Ibn Battuta, the great traveler who kind of traveled through. And the first track that you hear, you know, it just got my hair standing because, of course, it's the big, strong bowing that she does, which has been the trademark of her father too where it's very difficult to know whether it's going up or going down because it remains one note. For most other musicians, when it goes up and down, you can feel the 
bow changing, but it never happens in the T.M. Krishna school, and that's one of the great strengths of bowing and the smoothness of the bowing. But what's interesting is in this video showing Vigneshwara and, uh, you know, gods themselves make journeys. When I went to shoot uh, for Guru at uh, Badami and uh, the capital of the Chalukyas, the Pallavas and the Chalukyas fought many battles between 4th century and 8th century and there were many, uh, you know, continuous battles. And Pulakeshi won and uh, the, uh, the Chalukya king, they had these fights. And at the end of one of them, they got hold of their god from, Chal from Badami and brought him all the way here. And that's why the most famous song in Hamsadwani has Vata Pi Ganapatim Bajeham. Vata Pi standing for Badami. And he who came from thing. So when gods have come from Maharashtra and resided so deeply in our hearts, so also the music. So I think the first bridge you make here is the bridge between north and south. And Hamsadwani is one such rag which is equally important in both the themes of music as well as its interpretation is pretty close and uh, the way the raga is interpreted remains uh, you know beautiful but in Carnatic music when you look at it you see so many of the ragas telling you from where they have come Saurashtram I mean it's obvious that it's coming from Saurashtra <laughs> when you have Kamboji you think is it coming from Cambodia I mean where is it coming from and then you say, no, 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 it's not there. There's something called Hari Kamboji. So it's from here. <laughs> this is from the land of Hari. So you have various indicators that music actually came from very many areas. So I love the second song, which I think is from uh, something like Chakravaham, you know, which, uh, and I kind of know these ragams based on certain songs and I identify it like Pavana Guru or, you know, so you remember these things. But the... Most impressive is when you hear the Kiravani piece and I was walking in Turkey and when the Muzain called, it is the most uh, beautiful experience walking in Istanbul because each uh, mosque calls in a certain raga and you can feel the Kiravani and uh, that is so beautiful when it comes. And then while Ibn Battuta made this journey, it is believed, of course, he came here and met the crazy uh, Mohammed bin Tukluk and wrote extensively about the tortures that he was doing and the craziness that he was involved in and is sailing down and trying to reach China. And so the other big song which is in the pentatonic scale which you will see is the Mohanam has very distinct Far Eastern influences because this journey takes you down to China and then when you come back all the shipping was possible with the monsoon winds and when you hear that Madhyamauti and you really feel the rain is coming and for people like us from Kerala where we have six months of rain it's the most beautiful time you know and, and, and to hear the rain is fantastic and then coming to uh, the last two songs you know in Kapi and and then finally having her father herself play with him during the Sindhubarivi which sort of again reconciles in this great um, uh, devotional offering towards the temple sounds and all that. I think it's a marvelous journey that she has taken uh, thing and when she calls it, uh, it's the reverse journey that Ibn Battuta took all the way from Morocco to uh, here and come to Calicut and then go further. And it's very interesting that there is even a belief that Ibn Battuta visited Madurai and uh, it was during the extreme plague of uh, uh, Giyazuddin Damani, one of the crazy kings who ruled and it, most people may not be aware that for 50 years the Madurai Sultanate ruled, you know, after the fall of the Hoya Salas. So Madurai, which we now think as the seat of Tamil culture for 50 years was ruled by the Madurai Sultanate. So music was going up and down, Kirwani coming from there, uh, our music, Hindustani coming from here and it was being energized and retracing this energy and trying to create this global sound without losing its Carnatic roots is a great effort and I thank um, Viji and everybody who collaborated, my dear friend Shalene, Gopi Sundar and the host of other musicians who have got together who I don't know by name because I have only heard their sound and the gentleman who made the music video 
and for everybody who has come together, let's hope and pray that this song and these, this album will cross the oceans and spread the world and survive the test of time like these ragas have done.